Hi, I'm Matt Confliti, a technical consultant here at McNaught McKay with the PLC HMI and Software Group. Today I'm going to be going over an update on the new GuardLogix 5580 controller and Compact GuardLogix 5380 controller. So when we look at increased diagnostics, easier changeability, and reduced wiring, when we look at the far left here we have our standard uh, safety relays. We have configurable safety relays being the CR30 and later in the year the CR50. GuardLink which allows us to bring in more diagnostics over a network. And then what we're going to be focused on today over on the far right is our safety PLC family and safety IO. So to give kind of a, a brief background on the uh, PLC products that we have today and make sure we're all up to speed on the terminology. Uh, at the top here we have the oldest being the L6 family which was a single core uh, chipset. Uh, those had serial ports and batteries that you'll notice so if you have a serial port or battery that product is pretty much obsolete at this time and we'll be focused more on the newer products. So. Uh, in the middle there, the L7 or the dual core products, those are the most prevalent in the industry. We have the 5570 on the left, which is your uh, full blown control logics or guard logics. And then on the right, we have the compact uh, family being the 5370. So you notice when it's compact, we have the 53 prefix. And then when it's uh, full blown control or guard logics, we have the 55 uh, prefix. And then at the very bottom, which is what we're going to be focused on today, is the new quad-core chipset, which is based on the L8 chipset. So we have the GuardLogix 5580 on the left, and then the compact GuardLogix 5380 on the right. So when you look at the benefits of an L8 controller over an L7 controller, whether it's in the compact family or in the control logics family, whether it's standard or safe, what you get is about 10 times the CPU capacity, and in addition to that, about five times the network bandwidth out the gigabit port on the front. So if you look on the left, we have an L7 uh, controller family with five NICs potentially to get the capacity that you're getting out of a new L8 controller. So if you notice, we have that uh, Ethernet port right in the front of the PLC. That is a true gigabit port with a lot of capacity. With the GuardLogix family of controllers, if you're not familiar with the software environment, this is kind of pointing out that we use standard Studio 5000 programming environment. We use uh, the same Ethernet IP network, the same ladder logic type programming structure. So if you're used to using a standard PLC in the Studio 5000 environment, going into a GuardLogix family is going to be very familiar to you. We have uh, TUV certified instructions that you can use uh, just to drop into your ladder logic programming. And then on the same network, we have safety IO, uh, safe interfaces to our motion drives products. And again, it's all standard cabling, standard switches uh, that you can use even if you're in a safety environment. So we compared the, uh, the previous 5570 uh, GuardLogix to the new 5580. Uh, what I have on this slide here is highlighted the big differences. So we don't have an on-machine variant just yet in the 5580. That'll be coming out uh, hopefully next year in a completely different form factor and packaging. But currently that's really the, the only advantage you can get over the current GuardLogix 5580 with the old one. So as you see with the new one, we can go up to 256 axes of motion. We get a gigabit Ethernet port right in the front of it. And then this new concept of scalable safety where we actually don't need a safety partner in the 5580 platform. If you only need performance level D or SIL2, you can get away with just a single uh, safety controller without the partner. Saves you some money as well as uh, allows it to be scalable in the future. And then lastly on there highlighted, we have uh, a new feature coming out called SIP security, which basically enables security at the chip level and you set up trust in between your devices. So without having to put a middleman type D-packet inspection or firewall, we can actually configure what devices are allowed to talk to what other devices. So it so allows you to establish a secure network and that'll only be available on the L8 chipsets and then the new 5000 based uh, I.O. that we'll talk about in a bit. So similar uh, feature comparison here, we compare the current Compact Guard Logix 5370 to the new Compact Guard Logix 5380. So currently with the 5380, we do not have uh, the ability to go to performance level E or SIL3. So if you look, that's really the only advantage you have with the older uh, 5370 today. So all the benefits now with the 5380, the, the huge one that I see is a dual IP address capability. So with the predecessor, we had two NICs in the bottom, but that only allowed you to do one IP address. So now we're truly getting two gigabit capable scanners, Ethernet scanners with two unique IP addresses right out of that compact form factor PLC. And the price point to get in the door on one of these is about 1200 bucks. So in addition to that, we have a wide range of memory options and then up to uh, 32 axes of motion. And then in addition to that, that SIP security I mentioned in the previous slide, is also going to be available on this as well. So what I'd like to point out on this slide uh, with the new features of the multi-core processor is now I have a core dedicated to logic and I.O., core dedicated to comms, core for motion, and a core for safety. So one of the big ones here that I see is the core dedicated to comms. So in the past, you had to do things like set a system overhead time slice 
because your CPU only has so much bandwidth to handle processing all these other tasks in I.O. in addition to handling comms. So now I have a full core dedicated to comms, so that allows me to add to uh, have more panel views and things on the network without decreasing the performance or the scan time of the CPU. So again, the thing to point out here is we do not need uh, both the partner and the primary if, if you only need a performance level D or a SIL 2. And then, and then down at the bottom there, we see that we have four options available with this controller uh, that range in memory sizes and then this concept of nodes. So if you've used a Compact Logix 5370 family before, then you're familiar with the node concept. This is new in the full control logics that came with the L8. So the way we size it is by memory in the processor and then by number of nodes in the I.O. tree that are on Ethernet. So if it has an IP address, it counts as a node in the I.O. tree. So you notice with the new L84 processor, if you go uh, to version 32 or higher, then we really don't have a limit on nodes. Uh, consult, obviously, with your Mac and Mac or, or Rockwell representative to look at application considerations, but there's no software-restricted node limits in there. In addition to that, just to point out, you do need version 31 or newer for the GuardLogix L8-based uh, controllers. So similar uh, with the 5380 uh, compact variant of that, again, we only have the performance level D available today, and we will have the performance level E by the spring of this year, hopefully. Same as with the big brother to this, you need version 31 of the software, and then we have, again, a wide range of uh, memory options and then node count options as well. So on the left here are the I.O. flavors that we have available today when it comes to safety. So we have IP20 and IP67 variants of the same flavor of I.O. capabilities being the 1791 ES and the 1732 ES. And then .0 is probably the most prevalent in the industry, the people's most favorite, because it allows you to mix and match standard and safe I.O. all in the same backplane. And these guys all count as one node regardless of how many uh, I.O. modules you would connect to that backplane because it's one IP address. So on the right, getting into the new I.O., the 5069 and the 5094, both of these do require an L8 uh, controller to work. So you cannot use these ones on the right with the old L7-based chipset. The ones on the left on this slide work with both the L7 and the L8. But getting into these new uh, gigabit class of I.O., we'll have safety again out here in the spring. These will also support that SIP security to enable you to decide what devices are allowed to talk to what devices as well. So a little more detail on the 5069. So what's really cool here, if you see in the bottom of the slide, this is the first time we'll be able to have a full-blown guard logic system without having to go to a network if you don't need to. So with this new I.O., another cool thing to point out is we'll have a, a sourcing or bipolar configurable output module. So in the past, you had to buy a sourcing module or you had to buy a bipolar. Now you buy one module that covers both, just depends on how you configure it and wire it and then a, a standard or safety uh, class eight point input module as well. So the new Flex 5000 IO, if you notice the 94 in there, it came out in 1994, so this is the first time it's being revised uh, since then. So what it has is pretty much the same cutout dimensions and, and mounting dimensions, allows you to mount horizontal or vertically, and it's gonna be key for these process applications that require a wide temperature range. So if you notice, we have uh, negative 40C up to 70C, and in addition, it also, they all come class one div two out of the box uh, capable. So the safety uh, modules, which we care about for this presentation, they will be available here in the spring as well. So there's gonna be a wide range of uh, safety modules coming for this Flex 5000. So if you notice, we'll have a relay output module, uh, 16 channel high density. We haven't had anything with 16 channels until this is gonna be available. The two millisecond RPI is very fast. So again, these process applications, I think this would be a great fit. Um, and then on the right, the safety analog, we'll have heart modules, uh, a variety, RTD, thermo, again, for these process-based applications. So a little more detail on the safety I.O. modules coming for Flex 5000. So we're going to have a much higher density offering available, so 16 channel, in and out. And in addition to that, uh, for the first time, we'll have a relay output module uh, for safety I.O., which, which can become in, come in handy when you need a, uh, just a standard contact closure and don't have to worry about grounding and things like that. So in addition to that, you're getting a high-speed RPI because this is gigabit capable. Um, and then on the right here for these process applications, we're going to have a variety of analog safety modules, including heart, thermo, RTD, um, and a variety of others. And then at the bottom there, you notice we have a configurable safety state. So again, for these process type applications, you could actually configure the safety to stay, the outputs to stay on or high if you lose the network connection, if that's uh, applicable to your application. So something we can't do with any other I.O. family. And in addition, we're finally coming out with backplane-based uh, safety I.O. for the full GuardLogix controller, and this will be mid-2019. Uh, 
And if you notice, we will also have uh, an AC uh, safety input module and relay output safety module. So again, things we have not had in the past are going to be coming out for this platform as well. So let's talk a little bit about scalable safety levels. So we mentioned that you could do performance level D or E, whereas in the past we were only capable of PLE, whether you needed it or not. So how you come up with a safety level for your specific application is through a risk assessment. So you go through a decision tree, determine the severity of the injury, frequency of exposure, and the ability to avoid that injury. So as you go through this decision tree for any safety uh, application technique or safety uh, function, you're going to determine if it's a performance level D requirement or performance level E. What we found is the majority of our applications out there actually only require performance level D or SIL2. So 85% of these uh, typically only require PLD or SIL2. So you've been you know, working with our systems in the past, you've always had to go to E whether you needed it or not. Now we can hopefully uh, save you some money in this case. So how these performance levels kind of get dictated on the individual component level is, is through the probability of failing dangerously per hour. So if you notice uh, 10 to the minus seventh uh, for uh, PLE, and then you know, it kind of goes from there. So this is straight out of our safe book, which goes through all of our safety standards and how to apply our products to uh, achieve your safety levels. But what I like to point out in this is how each component has its own performance level rating. So let's do a quick example. If you were to take a, a safety function, basically a, a gate in this case, where I have safety gates connected into safety input module with a single uh, performance level D class controller going to safety point AO to safety contactors, if you look at the individual components on this, it actually add them all up, it would come out to a performance level of E. But because I chose just a single GuardLogix uh, controller without going to the full PLE, you're only as safe as your lowest common denominator. So in this case, the safety function is only going to meet that performance level D or SIL2. So again, just pointing out, you have the choice now. What we have been recommending to customers is similar to in the old PLC5 days where you wanted to leave that slot right to the right of the controller empty for future needs in case you needed an Ethernet side card. Recommend the same thing here. If you're going to go performance level D, leave that slot to the right empty in case you need to go E in the future. You can just put the partner in down the road. So as we mentioned, the capacity uh, savings that you get up to five Ethernet card type improvement and then the CPU up to 10 times. If you look at kind of the space savings in the cabinet, you know, you could actually reduce uh, the size here and the amount of components to buy, so there should be a cost savings uh, in addition to that. So on the bottom would be the L7 type controller to get that same capacity, much smaller, much less products to buy on the top. Just to show a rendering here down at the bottom of what the, uh, the do out in the spring, the PLE version of the compact Guard Logix 5380 is gonna look like, it's just gonna be a little bit wider to get that uh, uh, safety partner basically under the hood. So it's kind of an eye chart. If you want to pause and take a look at all the, the variety of comparison here uh, between the L7 and the L8. Down at the bottom, we've again switched over to nodes. So there's only four different uh, catalog numbers with the L8 sold by the number of nodes and the, and the size of the memory. And again, we can go to unlimited with the version 32 and an L84. So similarly on the Compact Guard Logics 5380, the thing I like to point out here is this huge range of Ethernet nodes and memory that we now have. We also offer conformally coded, so there's a huge, uh, huge span of controllers you could, you could select from here to get the right size for your application. So we've been talking about improved capacity quite a bit, so I wanted to, to point out one example, a large automotive template, basically taking that with uh, 250 nodes and running it in an L7 and then converting it to the L8 controller. What we saw was nearly a two times faster scan on the safety task and nearly four times faster on the standard task. So what does this really mean? What does this equate to in the real world? So if we take this, we can actually improve our safety distance. So if we're at twice as fast uh, executing our safety task, we can bump up or actually speed up our safety input RPIs. So if we do that, we can take our safety input RPI and drop it from 20 milliseconds down to 10. Our safety task period that we execute, we can actually do it twice as often now. So instead of every 50 milliseconds, we can do it every 25. And then if we use our GuardLogix uh, safety calculation spreadsheet, our multi-fault reaction time drops from 324 to 173 milliseconds. And this equates to a difference of 151 milliseconds of safety reaction time savings. If you plug that into your safety distance equation, and you're looking for the, this is the T sub C, it's basically been reduced by 151 milliseconds. So if I take that and plug in my time constant K, which is 63 inches per second for an operator's you know, walking type uh, speed or entering a cell, that sort of thing, 
What do we think this does to my safety distance? Well, it can save me up to nine and a half inches. So if we're looking at horizontal light curtains now, I could actually make those potentially smaller. I could put the operator closer to the, the actual work uh, being done in the, in the cell. So this could potentially save steps. This equates to real dollars uh, right to the bottom line to improve uh, throughput and cycle time. So the last thing I'd like to point out is Rockwell does a fabulous job of documenting a wide variety of safety application techniques or safety functions. So they put together, for example, PLC programs, HMI programs, wiring diagrams, bill of materials, uh, your Sistema calculations, your verification and validation checklists that actually go through to verify that your system is meeting the performance level that it was designed to, um, as well as the maintenance tasks that you need to do uh, on a regular basis to maintain that safety uh, integrity level. All this stuff's very well documented. If you go to Rockwell's website and type in safety-AT, AT being application technique, and just let it go, you'll see all of them. Or if after that, you want to put space in something like safe torque off or a gate switch, that sort of thing, you're going to get a variety of examples to address exactly what you're looking for. Well, thank you for watching. And for more information, please visit our website, download our app, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.